So I have um, good news and bad news. Let's start with the bad news. We recently diagnosed a pathogen in a man. It's a bacterium known to cause serious stomach problems, like chronic gastritis and even stomach cancer. It's called Helicobacter pylori, abbreviated H. pylori. We know a lot about the infection in this man. For example, that it's a more aggressive type of H. pylori, and also that it's of Asian origin, which is surprising, because the man is European, and Asian H. pylori doesn't usually occur in Europe. Now the good news. The pathogen is no more an issue for this man, because it has already been dead for over 5,000 years. <laughs> the man goes by the name of Etsy, the Iceman. He lived in what is today South Tyrol, around 3,300 before current era. His life after death started when his well-preserved body was discovered in 1991 in the Edstaler Alps on the border of Austria and Italy. This finding had a huge impact on our understanding of, of the prehistoric European civilization. Ötzi's clothes, tools, and equipment were highly sophisticated, making you think rather of a modern survival expert than of a Stone Age man. Here you can see some examples. He had a number of tattoos, which could be related to acupuncture treatments performed in China 2,000 years later. This man and his belongings demonstrated the high level of European culture at the time and gave a boost to archaeology and prehistoric research. You can imagine the huge excitement that accompanied the discovery of this scientific jewel. Just look at how the mummy is preserved today in a sterile refrigeration chamber with precisely controlled atmospheric conditions and an alarm system that goes off if any parameter changes. Now guess what? There was no excitement whatsoever. This is how the mummy was handled when it was recovered from the ice. It was discovered accidentally, and people thought that it was the corpse of a 20th century mountain climber. The recovery was performed using ice picks and a pneumatic drill, which damaged his hip bone. His bow was broken, and his curiously looking axe was taken to a gendarmerie post. <laughs> Later, a medical examiner was about to recommend burying the body before a medical expert took a second glance and realized its true age and significance. Nobody knows if other mummies were not as lucky. Now, this was the first surprise in the history of Etsy research, but definitely not the last. Another was related to the cause of his death. Even though radiographic imaging was performed multiple times, it wasn't until 10 years after the discovery of the body that an arrowhead that inflicted a deadly wound was identified in his shoulder. Etsy's stomach was discovered in his body several years later. <laughs> Before then, it was overlooked because it was located in an unexpected position. It was flattened and shifted upward. So again, the discovery of both the arrowhead and the stomach required a second glance. Well, at least a second. So the stomach was still filled with food. And of course, curious as they are, scientists could not sleep peacefully without knowing what a 5,000-year-old guy had as his last meal. Samples were taken, sequenced on a DNA sequencing machine, and analyzed. This is also how we learned that he was infected by H. pylori. Now, what's so special about H. pylori? For one thing, it's a medically highly relevant pathogen, as about 50% of the world's population are infected. Also, it has accompanied our species for millennia, and its genetic history reflects the human history in great detail, so it can be used as a tool for tracking human migrations. For example, it helped to elucidate how the peopling of the Pacific many thousands of years ago happened. However, similar as with Etsy, the history of H. pylori research did not have an easy start. Robin Warren and Barry Marshall discovered H. pylori in the 80s. For this discovery, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine 2005. 
Now you can imagine the huge excitement that the company does groundbreaking research about H. pylori and its role in stomach diseases. For decades, people had thought that chronic stomach problems affecting millions of people all over the world were caused by psychic stress and bad lifestyle habits. Suddenly, it was discovered that in most cases, it was an infectious disease that could be cured by antibiotics. Now, guess what? There was no excitement whatsoever. On the contrary, when Warren and Marshall sent their results to scientific journals or conferences, the reviewers, which means scientists who evaluate the work, would not recognize its importance or even not believe the results. The reason was that people at that time knew that no bacterium could live in the acidic environment of the human stomach. They were used to this idea so much that they overlooked this possibility for quite a while. At the same time, when Warren was asked why nobody had observed H. pylori earlier in stomach samples, he said it was. Actually, reports of bacteria in the human stomach date back to the 19th century. But the importance was not recognized, their existence was not validated, and the medical research went another direction. So again, it took a second glance to learn more about this highly interesting pathogen. Our Iceman H. pylori project, it was a big collaboration. Several research groups from different countries were involved, each with its own area of expertise. I'm working in a bioinformatics group at the University of Vienna. In case you don't know what bioinformatics is, don't worry, you're not alone. When I meet a new person and tell that I'm doing bioinformatics, the reaction is usually like, oh really, wow, what's this anyway? It's simple. You address biological questions using a computer because it can access information and calculate really fast. What functions are encoded in the genome of a bacterium? How did the protein evolve? And in our case, what was in Etsy's stomach? To learn about the contents of Etsy's stomach, you could, for example, use a microscope. But DNA, a genetic material, can provide much more accurate information. So you can take a sample, prepare it for sequencing, and then put it into a DNA sequencing machine. What the machine gives you back is where bioinformatics starts. It's a plain text file with lots of DNA letters. This file contains a mixture of the DNA in the sample. Not one single genome, but bits and pieces of genomes of several organisms. This is called a metagenome. To learn which organisms are represented in this metagenome, you can compare it to a reference collection, a database of DNAs of known origin, and quantify the similarities. Here you see an example of what the result for one piece of DNA might look like. However, maybe the organism in question isn't known yet, and its DNA is absent from the database. Or maybe there are too many similar DNAs. So it's a challenging task, and it has its limitations. Now, when I got the Iceman stomach sample, I was told that others had already looked into it, and that H. pylori wasn't there. Of course, this was a pity, but not unexpected. Previous experiments were inconclusive, but mostly failed to detect H. pylori in the outer part of the stomach, where it was expected to be. However, a more thorough analysis of the data showed that it actually was there, just not in the outer, but in the inner part of the stomach. It seems that the stomach lining had come off and collapsed into the center. We made a huge effort to validate this result, to be sure that it's not a contamination, but that this bacterium really was the Iceman's original companion. Using additional experimental methods, we could reconstruct almost its entire genome. We learned that it's of Asian origin, uh, that it's an Asian H. pylori type, while modern European H. pylori are usually a mixture of the Asian and African types. Now, so this might indicate that the Asian influences in Europe predated the African ones. Well, one single mummy is not really enough to say that. But there are a lot more out there, and you can be sure that studies of ancient DNA will lead to many more interesting discoveries.
Now think about what I told you today. The Iceman was almost overlooked. H. pylori was almost overlooked. And the H. pylori in the Iceman was almost overlooked. From all this, it might seem that science is sort of random and interesting findings happen mainly by chance. This is, however, not true. Chance does play a role, but even more so do attentiveness and persistence. If you feel that something's worth going deeper, try and do so. Of course, you never know where you'll end up. Maybe there is nothing to see and you're just wasting your time. But don't make the mistake and stop looking too early. A second glance is often all you need. Thank you.